So the serpent causes them to believe that maybe God doesn't really love them that much or at all, really. And they believe a lie. And they, they eat the forbidden fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And it opened up their, not only their eyes, but it also opened up the door to spiritual death and banishment from the garden. That is what we call the fall. Sometimes we, so, we forget that there is this thing that entered the world called sin. The world isn't as God made it to be, friends. God made everything and he said it was good. When God created man, he said it was good. What God set in motion was good, but we forget. Come on. We are working to better our world, but we must remember that something has been introduced into our world that is the reason why everything is upside down. And God is not going to wave a magic wand and make it all go away. He's going to fix the problem. The problem, that which caused the problem in the first place. Because at the end of the day, God will be vindicated and we will stand before him and say, Ah, oh God, you really do love us. Thank you. Some of us don't understand now, but the day is coming when we will realize just how much he loves us. But let me just tell you what happened when the fall came. The effect of Adam's sin. The effect of his sin was death in the form of alienation. Estrangement from God. Separation from God. So alienation from God. The Bible tells us in Genesis 3, he says, When they heard the sound of God walking in the garden after they had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says, and their eyes were open. When they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, and get this, this would be a sound that they would have been accustomed to because as I mentioned, God would come and fellowship with them regularly. So this was like a regular stop for him. But this time, instead of running to meet God, they ran and they hid from God. The Bible says, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh God among the trees of the garden. And Yahweh God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he replied, that is Adam, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid because I am naked, so I hid myself. All this time he's running around naked. It wasn't a problem. All of a sudden he's aware of his nakedness. The innocence is gone. He's seeing things now differently to how he was created to see them. Catch that. So first thing we lose when we are alienated from God is we lose our perspective. We no longer see anything the way God intended for us to see it. We lose our what? Our perspective. So we hide, we hide from God. So that's the first thing. And this is a message in itself because alienation from God, really, everything else I will tell you, this is where it begins. You become cut off from the source of your life, your wisdom, your strength, your light, and everything. Everything else is going to go wrong in your life. I want to tell you that this morning. Those of you who think God doesn't mean you well, those of you who are still hiding from God or because you've been taught that God is, is, is out to punish you, you've been taught that God is the severe and merciless uh, father or, or, or some person that's just full of wrath and impatient and just waiting to, to swat you because you've messed up. And many of us run from God because we have these crazy religious ideas in our heads that we grew up with. And that's why I try to drive it home for you how much you're really loved. Because the image of God that we carry in our head about him being this judgmental God is not, it's, it's, it's far, 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 far from the God of the Bible. But when we dis, dis, distance ourselves like Adam and we run and we hide and we cover up, how many of you know we just make it worse for ourselves? Because the farther you are removed from the source of your life, your creator is the blinder you become. The second thing that happened in the fall was alienation from one another. Adam and his wife were supposed to be one. But when God came to settle matters with them after the fall, Adam was quick to distance himself from Eve. He said, when God says, who told you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I forbade you to eat? And the man replied, the woman you gave me to be with me. She gave me from the tree and I ate. Isn't it nice to have a wife to blame for stuff? <laughs> Brothers, y'all are missing out on marriage right now. This, that right there is... 
But in seriousness, no, that's why I married her. I just wanted to have somebody to blame for stuff. I quickly found out that it's the other way around. That gets reversed on you real quick before you know it. Brother Evans, you're the, oh, whoa, whoa, it was me. Oh, it's like that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but notice, when you blame someone else, you differentiate. It's like you're wanting to differentiate yourself from them by saying, not me, him. See, I'm, 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 I'm me. That's that. I know we're supposed to be together, but right now I'm, I'm just saying I'm... <laughs> I'm the innocent one. She's the guilty one. And you differentiate yourself from someone when, when you do that. And, and here's the thing. This carries over not only in marriage relationships, but in every kind of relationship. This is why the human race has such trouble getting along, because we find these ways of differentiating ourselves from one another by the color of skin. The stupid idea of colorism and racism that follows that, which has just been, been a curse and a bane to the world for, 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 for centuries. I pray God would just remove that from our lives because this is exactly the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that we're eating from. When we look at another person because their skin color is different from ours and try to say that they are not quite as we are. How, how, how childish... But yet, not to stay on that, this is the reason for racism. It's the need to differentiate yourself from other people. Let's blame those people. Not us, them. We're good. They're not so good. See where it comes from? And so we are estranged from one another. And we can't see another as our brother because we have made this issue of colorism the most important thing about a person. There's a new kind of racism in America. We're going back to trying to reverse racism by becoming racist ourselves. Because we're doing the same thing racists did when we didn't want them to do it. Now we're saying the color of your skin does matter. It's the most important thing about you that there is. The devil is a liar. Amen. Children of God, don't you ever buy into that. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's not going to make our world better. That's the least important thing about you is the color of your skin. You know nothing about me by just looking at me. You need to know me. You need to know the man that I am. The quality of my character. So we're alienated from one another. And this is why as it goes on, we see that Cain kills his brother. Same thing. Enmity begins to spring up between people. Oh, you like him better than me. All right, I know what to do. I'll just get rid of him. And this is why we see these things in our world. Then there's alienation from self. Alienation from self. The Bible says, Then the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and they made themselves coverings. You see, shame makes us hide from ourselves. It makes us tell lies. We cover up. We don't just hide from others, we hide from ourselves because what happens is once we start telling lies, the truth is we believe them because the lies we tell ourselves are far more potent than the ones that others tell us. Because even if we reject the lies that other people try to pin on us, we readily believe the ones we tell. Sometimes we pretend, but we start believing what we pretend to be. Sometimes we tell lies, but then we start believing those lies and we become what we pretend to be. Once you believe a lie, it becomes a part of your identity. And so through practice self-alienation, we lose the sense of who we are. This is why, amen, God is restoring. Some of us have lost the sense of who we are, but in Jesus, where we find our life, everything converges again. I love what God does when he comes into our world, into our life. I can tell you about me and some of the stuff I grew up with. Don't have time to get into it. But I speak from experience. I speak from the, the depth of my soul this morning about lies we tell ourselves. Maybe I'm the only one in this room that's ever done that. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm unique today. Glory to God. Maybe none of you here has ever, amen, told a lie about yourself. To, to, hey, maybe, maybe you're all just so, so, so I got to catch up to you. Glory to God. Father, help me this morning. But I thank you that I have the courage to be honest. Adam also distanced himself from God. You know, the more he distanced himself from God is the less he was able to understand himself. Okay. 
The last thing is, we were alienated from creation. So all of that God has got to restore. You know, the Bible tells us that the earth once cooperated with Adam. It produced food for him. But now the earth was at enmity with him. He had to, he had to put in more effort just to get the same results. The Bible says, by the sweat of your brow. He wasn't sweating before. Now he had to sweat to bring, some, bring home the bacon for Eve. Come on. And I'm sure you know the kids were multiplying. The Bible doesn't tell us about every birth, but Eve was cranking out them babies, y'all. <laughs> you were cranking out them babies one after the other, man. And Adam had to hustle to take care of that family. Some brothers can relate to that. God told me, he said, the ground shall be cursed in your account, and in pain you shall eat. From it all the days of your life, and the thorns and thistles shall it sprout for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field, and by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread until you, you return to the ground. For from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That is what God pronounced. In other words, one day, Adam, you weren't even designed to die, but you're going to die now because you opened the door. But before you see physical death, you're going to know spiritual death. You're going to walk around this world blind, not having a right perspective, not being able to see things as you were intended to see them, not being able to function as you were truly meant to function. Because when you cut yourself off from your source, you have nothing, nothing, nothing to go on. 